Back in November of 2020, I was given a very special opportunity. I got to do a video advertisement for a fan project, one based around my second favorite game of all time, Shadow of the Colossus. The project, called Beyond the Forbidden Lands, would be reintegrating all of the beta content that got cut from the game before its release back in 2005. That video served mostly as an announcement, and naturally, people have been asking me if the project got anywhere since that announcement. I haven't been able to offer any information because, well, I'm not involved with the project. I just had the privilege of advertising for them. Today, I am terribly pleased to provide all of you with an update. I met up with two team members from the project about a week ago, and they were kind enough to not only let me interview them, but also show me models, animations, and arenas. And I'm going to show you almost everything that I saw. Before I get to all that good stuff, and there is a lot of it, I just want to make one thing clear. This project is made possible by volunteers. It isn't funded in any way. Therefore, the progress that has been made, while substantial and exciting, is reflective of something that is done for free. So please, just manage your expectations just a little bit. With that said, here is your newest look at Beyond the Forbidden Lands. Very quickly before we get into all the juicy details, do you guys want to tell me what exactly you do as a part of the team? Uh, let's start with Slug. Okay, hi. I'm an animator on the Beyond the Forbidden Lands project, and as you can probably tell, I primarily do animation on the Colossi, and I do a tiny bit of modeling. Uh, I've done a bit of work on some of the arenas, but primarily I do animation, and it's pretty much what I do. So my name is Crooked Nose, or Crooked, and uh, I'm a concept artist specializing in 2D illustration and concept design for the project. I also do some planning a lot for uh, all the stuff coming down the, down the pipeline that we'll need to tackle down the road, just putting out ideas for how to handle certain colossi and uh, their battles and stuff. I should mention I'm also currently the person in charge of the project right now, so that's an <laughs> important detail. Beyond the Forbidden Lands is still a fan-made project to try and resurrect some of the cut content from Shadow of the Colossus released in 2005. There are about 10 that we can uncover, and through you know rigorous research and development, we're trying to create accurate representations and, and recreations of these battles, since uh, you know fans like us can't get enough of the cut content for this game, yeah. it really is such a rabbit hole. Tell me about yeah, it. People in this community obviously love the cut content. It's just so interesting. It's like, once you get into it, it just doesn't end. And I know there's so many people who want to actually have playable versions of that cut, cut content, and we hope we can provide uh, something similar. Yeah. So, can you maybe give us a general overview of some of the new developments that have taken place in the last few years. Um, just, like, we'll, we'll get to the specifics of each Colossi in a second, but can you yeah. tell us sort of, like, generally? Um, I guess I should preface this by saying that around July of 2021, development of this project was completely restarted, like from scratch. I know uh, when you made the original video on us, that team that was working on it, almost all of them left and a lot of new people, including us, joined on, and we started taking over development, and with the project at that time, we weren't exactly happy with the, the state, so we decided to start over from scratch, and I can say I'm very happy with what we accomplished in this in this past year, mm. and I hope sure. to show some of that. Yeah, about the restart. Um, the thing to note about that is, just real quick, that you know people come and go on these sorts of projects often, so that's nothing unusual there, but um, the project has always been in a better place than it was previously, like since people kind of coming and going started happening, that the project right now is in a really good spot and I'm really happy with the team we have and everybody has a good head on their shoulders and they're dedicated and really eager to put out some more content for people, so. Wonderful. So why don't we uh, showcase some of that content, shall we? Well, let's start with probably the one that's most uh, associated with the project right now, which which is Sirius. I'd say as of now, Sirius is the most complete of the Colossi. He's fully modeled, textured, has a bunch of animations, and I know the programmers are working on his AI right now. These two videos are obviously of Sirius's Stonehenge, and... <laughs> 
Oh, oh, I'm playing it right now. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And then I'm playing the second one and it gets back up. Yeah. Oh, I've fallen and I can't get up. Oh, that's, oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, he looks so gorgeous. I, I just want to pet him. <laughs> and I have just some nice little animations going on. This is just a simple idol right here. Where he just looks around. <laughs> and I also you can see there's a lot right here. I, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the rage animation where he's just super angry. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> what else is in here? Oh, yeah, just another little idol where he just scratches his face. <laughs> <laughs> this animation isn't fully finished yet, but it's just a little thing of Sirius waking up, and I liked it. Hmm. The shake looks a bit weird, and especially the jump right there, but I'll have that smoothened out later on. I, I forgot to post this one of, of Sirius. It's just a nice little run, and we've kind of been calling it Frolicking Hog. Tackling Spider is definitely one of the trickier ones, just because it's shaped so uniquely, trying to figure yeah. out what would make sense for something uh, with that many legs to be moving at that size. In that video there, that's when he's like on the ground and recovering to get back up. Yeah. I wanted to have it like something this tall and lanky. It feels like it has to keep its balance. Yeah, and that, that really plays into the intended strategy too, I think. Um, yeah. Laying in little clues like that is a really smart way to, to go about uh, communicating things to the player as early as possible. Yeah, this is just a very rough version of Spider's Arena. This isn't final, it's just pretty rough. And I have Spider sitting in the little lake here, and this is where he gets up from it. There's going to be some clipping into the walls and stuff, but I'll fix that out later when we actually get on to polishing the arena and stuff. I just really like how Spider rises up. thing about Spider especially is that uh, it's so tall and top heavy so it's definitely a bit tricky to make it look natural I think this is the right animation I hope it's the one I was looking for where it kind of falls it's not finished it'll need some work but it's an idea Rock's model is finished, and unfortunately the model I have, the textures aren't applied, so it doesn't have textures right now. However, our other animator, Ingo, is working on the animations for Rock. The full model right here, which I think is absolutely beautiful. This model was made by a, a member named Vasilius, who I worked with. This was uh, one of the first tasks I worked on. So th that first image you sent me, that I, I recall that image from like looking at, I don't know, maybe Nomad's videos or something. But you're saying that that was something that was recreated in your own engine? Uh, yeah, that, that is our screenshot, but it's, it's based on one of the beta screenshots. Nice. I also have a really cool image of Rock's Arena that was made by a former member. <laughs> oh, yes. I imagine that you're going to try and remain as accurate and close to what the original Colossi look like and the arenas that they were in based on the information that we have. And then with the lack of information in regards to other Colossi, you're going to put your own creative touch on it, I suppose, right? Yeah. We're remaining uh, faithful to the original idea when we can, but there are some times where we do have to change some things or just make something up on our own. Like, for example, I know that uh, the reason the Griffin Colossus was cut was because its strategy just wasn't working out it wasn't fun it didn't work so we are going to be changing that strategy a bit just to make it more fun and engaging i mean the thing to keep in mind is that these colossi were cut from the game so obviously there was something that wasn't working so it's kind of up to us to sort of uh, fix these problems so i'll post the concept art for griffin right here okay well at least now we know where the weak spot's gonna be that that helps <laughs> <laughs> You know, we sort of have our own head canons of what these colossi should look like, but yeah. sometimes the research conflicts a little bit. The model for Griffin is in progress right now. It's not fully finished, but here's an image of what we have so far. And it'll also be your first look at a 
our Griffin Arena design. It's not finished at all. I still have a ton of work to do on this. This is heavily unfinished. Oh. It <laughs> looks so dope, man. I think next we should probably show what we've got going on with Worm. From what I know, one of the reasons it was cut is because the animations weren't working right and it looked too floaty and not big like the other colossi. Right. They From just what... couldn't get it to look right. So here's our concept art for Worm. Okay. This does showcase um, something that we've had to talk about <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, the bottom half or back half of Worm, um, which we believe is the, quote, flower bulb. A lot of people have the notion that Worm must have been like Dirge because of the obvious similarities in the, you know, surface right. level stuff. We actually, based on what we can tell, it seems more likely that Worm might have been stationary. Complete, like, Worm has no movement data from the game. Do you happen to know anything about the Half-Life 2 beta, like the Hydra specifically? Worm would function simili similarly to the Hydras from that, where it's like, basically, the Worm part coming out from a stationary point in the ground and the top part chases after you. Next, how about Devil? Because I know Crooked wanted to talk about it a bit. Here's Devil's concept art. I'm not I'm not super happy with how the face came out in the artwork, but um, we do also have some uh, model snippets to show since yeah. it's work in progress that I think. Right here, there's four images of Devil's body, and it's a work in progress. Again, I want to say that, so... He looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> If I recall correctly, you were supposed to fight Devil by trying to hide in bushes and then try to take him down by sneaking up on him or something like that? Uh, yeah, that part is true. Okay. We know that you were supposed to hide and like sneak up on him, but also Devil was supposed to be very aggressive, so probably would have been very hard to hide from him. Also here is the progress on Devil's face specifically. Imagining Devil's um, movement is actually one of the more fun uh, yeah. aspects that I like to think about just because he's so different, like Spider, I guess, but the opposite because he's so tiny. The Colossi we've shown so far have been definitely the most developed, but we do have other concept art to show. Okay. Here's concept art for the Phoenix. Mm. The big fire chicken. <laughs> Oh, I never noticed that that thing with the eye. Yeah, it's really cool. The one screenshot we've had of that eye for the longest time was incredibly low resolution, and you couldn't really tell. Mm -hmm. But eventually a higher resolution version was found, and we could actually see what was going on with the eye there. That actually is partially my fault that we have higher resolution images now for the wiki. Like, here's an image made by another former member. Yeah, this is just the kind of stuff that goes into analyzing these things, figuring out exactly which textures are where. These textures, do they exist in the game's files? Uh, yeah. There are some parts of unused Colossi that do have textures that are unfortunately not there anymore, mm -hmm. but a majority of the textures are there, like the ones in little squares, those exist. Here's some stuff on Monkey. We're still kind of nailing down the design a little bit. Yeah. Uh, we decided to kind of take it in a different direction as an experiment to see if we could sort of like bring Monkey's model a little further along since it was cut so early. There was something fun. I wasn't sure if we'd have time to get to it, but uh, the one thing I would like to say to preface anything about Yamori is that the, the arena itself around Yamori is almost uh, more of a mystery. All we know is that it's referred to as sluice, sluice. and we kind of know the shape of the perimeter, but there's a lot of ways you can kind of interpret the title, so that's been... Wait yeah. a minute. Sluice. Are you referring to the dam? No, sluice is like on the complete opposite side of the map. Oh, okay. Here, but a, lot me, of, uh... a lot of people went jump to that con conclusion, yeah. too. <laughs> so this isn't the dam? No, it's not the dam. It's gotcha. a quadrant b3 for geography it's opposite of uh the entrance to dirge's cave arena. Yeah. if you go north from the cave mouth you would hit this this is one image we have that we know is like it's it's right outside sluice but facing away from it this is like if you were standing at sluice and facing kind of towards dirge's arena yes this uh screenshot is a real teaser like <laughs> like it, it is such a tease because um the entrance to the arena is directly behind the camera <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
The whole dam thing was a big misconception because unfortunately the dam isn't really anything special. It just happened to be a pretty set piece. Yeah, I think it was a leftover asset um, sort of between development, wasn't it? Do yeah. something like that. The model itself is actually originally from Eco, but it's just been like stretched out of it. Hmm. Which is, yeah, it's it's disappointing for everyone. But yeah, um, that doesn't mean we can't do we can't do anything with it. But unfortunately, it's not part of anyone's arena, as far as we can tell. The map is something we're still working on and still conceptualizing, basically. But the biggest thing is that. Monkey and Griffin were never placed onto the map as we know it, so we essentially have to find a place on the map for them. Mm, makes but sense. everything else should be relatively as you know it, but of course there's going to be the Beta Colossi arenas, which are basing on the ideas from the earlier map, but the biggest change will definitely be Griffin and Monkey's arenas being on that map when they were never there in the first place. One thing I would like to point out is that like getting everything integrated on the map might be one of the later things on our list as far yeah. as priorities go. Sure. Uh, right now, we're focusing on getting the arenas in working order as at least separate stages, similar to how Team Ico did it originally, just to get all that working and then we can sort of work on, we can shift focus to the connective tissue there. So finally, before uh, we conclude, I just wanted to ask, uh, is there anything you wanted to say to the fans of this project and anybody that might be wanting to volunteer? What we're looking for the most right now is just Unity generalists and terrain artists. That's what we need the most right now. But anyone who wants to volunteer, feel free to come by, message uh, Crooked since he's the project leader. I'm very friendly. <laughs> I'm easy to talk to. So if you want to come and ask about this or that, I'm definitely up for chatting. And um, just for any general fans or whatever, if you have any further questions for us, feel free to join our Discord and just ask us whatever you want, because we're always around. Discord's open to anyone. And uh, we also have a link tree in some channel on our Discord, I think. Um, yeah, you can you can follow us on Twitter and stuff like yeah. that for more details. Thank you to all the fans who've been supporting us, and we hope more people get interested and want to help and are just want to see what we do. I just have this one last image I want to show. It's a scale chart of all of the colossi, and for the first time, you'll be getting a hint at the final colossus, Evis. I think that's how it's pronounced, but yeah. Uh, I typically say Avis, but you know, Avis, whichever. Yeah. The car it's sized up. <laughs> so yeah, the scale chart's been going through a few iterations, and there's probably some things that are still need slight adjustments. But there uh, is a new addition to this one that wasn't in previous ones. 